Hi, and welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. All right, let's dive right into today's video, which is all about giving you my review of Hubris after playing it for more than 20 hours. Of course, it's compatible with any Oculus Quest 2, Pico 4, HP Reverb D2, or other VR headsets that can hook up to Steam VR. Now, trailers always look amazing, of course, but the question is, how is the actual gameplay? Does it give justice to all the promotional marketing video? And ultimately, should you get it? If you're a science fiction hipster or a space explorer, then Hubris might just be the VR experience for you. In today's review, it will include some side-by-side -side comparison as we'll talk about the graphics, the shadows, and all the various different settings and giving you some tips and tricks there and there, which I was able to find along those 20 hours of gameplay. Just a disclaimer that I did do my best not to show any spoilers in today's video, and not all the footage is in chronological order of the actual gameplay story. And just to let you know that every recording coming from the actual game screen can look a little bit choppy, so to offset any of this, I have also recorded footage from the actual HP Reverb G2 Mixed Reality screen to show you whether the frames per second are smooth or if there are any issues there of any kind. There's also a slideshow near the end of the video as well, so do go to the timestamps below and skip to any area that's most valuable or relevant to you and of course I would suggest that you can also pause or rewind the video to go back to those moments that you need to rewatch. And do remember to hit the likes and the notification bell after you subscribe so more people can get to see the video and also to let me know that you would want similar content in the future. Time to get into the good stuff but first let's thank our sponsors of the day VR Dashwave store who provide lens prescription adapters and a variety of other accessories for VR devices. Now personally I have been using them for more than two years and I have dropped my lens prescription adapters multiple times along that time from very high heights including one meter or higher. They've never scratched or broken so to be honest with you I'm very happy to be able to talk about them today. And for those watching today's video will be able to enjoy a 5% discount using the promotional code VR Essentials. All right, time to dive into today's review. Let's go. So when you first launch the game Hubris, you'll be taken through a calibration process as well as where you can basically change some initial settings. But of course, if you're not happy with the settings, you can always change them later on just by pressing a button. It's very easy to do that. It will also include the calibration of the actual height of the person, although this is a very suitable game for those who require to be seated by the way. So in the initial setup, you can change whichever is your main hand, whether it's your left one or your right one. You can also set the difficulty, which generally speaking, Trooper is actually pretty tough already, but Veteran, of course, for those who want to dive deeper into the game, can certainly choose that as well. Hubris will also ask you what kind of setup you want in terms of your graphics. Now personally with the RTX 2070 i7-9700K Hero 11 motherboard by Asus, I chose quality even though the suggested is balanced. But as I said, you can always change that later. Now we're going to dive a little bit more in terms of the graphics with some side-by-side -side comparison, changing the various different resolution scale, sharpening, as well as the quality of the shadows in the ambient inclusion, whether to be quality or performance. So, but you do have the opportunity at any time during the game to just press a button and then bring up the actual panel to change the graphics, which I think is very, very user friendly. Once you're done with the calibration and all the various different settings, you'll find yourself immersed inside of hubris. Now from the get-go, for those especially who played Alien Isolation in the past, we'll find that there's definitely some inspiration there and it is quite similar to that game. The atmosphere from the get-go is very sci-fi and very mysterious and you'll find that you'll be doing first of all a tutorial which will show you how to of course navigate through the gameplay. You'll be learning how to do a lot of jumping, running, as well as course 
climbing, which is a very important element inside of Hubris. Just a tip that whilst you're doing the tutorial, do make sure that you finish listening to the instructions given to you and do not rush at any point because otherwise there might be some bugs that occur. For example, at one moment after you're asked to run, you'll see a door opening and they ask you to stand on a green square. Now, if you don't wait for the person to finish the talk and you go through straight away and then you go on the green square, then they ask you to jump to open the gate in front of you. Well, you'll see that basically it's not going to open and you're going to have to basically restart the entire tutorial again. Now during the gameplay you will be using a variety of different objects which will have different properties. For example some batteries to open various different portals and gates as well as some fruits to re-energize and give you extra energy as you deplete when you're being shot at for example by some enemies. Now also what's really interesting here is you could see as I grab them and I have them very close to me, the graphics are super sharp and really good. But as I mentioned, we will be doing some side by side later. So do hang around for that. I personally really love how the light is bouncing on the actual material of the fruit and the specularity there. You can really tell that a lot of work has been put and how the rendering is coming out is really well done. To grab objects, you don't necessarily need to bend down all the way to the floor or to bend your knees to the point that you have to touch the object as you would in the real world. All you have to do is hover your hand around the object, press one of the buttons and automatically it will come to you, which is very convenient. And I wish we could actually have that power in the real world where I feel the game really shines above and beyond. And to be honest, I haven't really experienced something like this to this level in other VR experiences is when you're swimming on the water. Now during the tutorial, they will show you just basically you don't have to press any buttons. All you have to do is mimic swimming itself. So if you push forward, you will swim forward. And if you push upwards or downwards, then you'll get to go towards the surface or you'll go further deeper inside of the water. But I have to admit that the graphics are absolutely sublime inside of the water, including the bubbles and all the various different reflections and refractions. You can actually, if you see from above, down below inside of the water, you'll notice all the various different refractions inside, which is pretty amazing. You'll also, of course, notice all the various different refractions and reflections above the water. But when you feel submerged, you'll definitely feel like you're inside of that actual environment. And there's plenty to swim in, including inside of various different ships, as well as outdoors, inside of caves. There's a whole bunch of different environments in which you'll be swimming. And of course, you'll have to fire and defeat various different monsters if you want to move on inside of the game, which honestly speaking, can be pretty stressful at times, I have to admit. All right, let's talk about the graphics with some side-by-side -side comparisons. I did test out various different settings in Super Sampling, including 500%, which will be on your left-hand side. The outdoors area definitely has some issues with the maps. It seems that there's a lot of blurriness going on there. And if you have a 3000 series or 4000 series, please comment below and let us know whether you have similar issues there. But everything that is close to you is absolutely normally generally fine. And also in large indoor areas, you'll find that you have very, very similar situations. It seems that objects and people, when you see them from far away, the pixels just can't render the details whatsoever. It becomes very blurry whilst everything up close then will basically be able to render and look completely fine. Now I have to admit that there are other areas indoors which are completely fine, even though they might be, you know, quite large and all the various different particle effects reflect Reflections, refractions, and also all the glass and all these kind of different things are really, really awesome, I have to admit. I mean, the lighting, the neons, all the various different smokes effects or particle effects when you're blasting your enemies and they disintegrate or they just vanish into various different molecules. It just looks really amazing, I have to admit. And I'm just really happy in terms of the level of the detail that the developers have put inside of this game. I mean, when you're going here, for example, in this very close space with the fog there, the fumes coming out of the pipes, it just looks absolutely amazing. Now, I have to admit that in terms of the shadow quality between 
quality and performance and also the MPU inclusion, it doesn't seem that there's that much difference. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But also where the game really shines is the actual animation part. You'll find that the graphics there are absolutely really, really well done. There's no glitches or issues of any kind. It just looks really magical. And using the power of Unreal, it looks as if they have some kind of meta-humans there, which looks really awesome. Now, Hubris is going to incorporate a lot of climbing and jumping. And I have to say, with the amount of climbing that you do, it definitely feels, you know, you definitely feel it on the arms, which is definitely great for VR fitness, of course. But I definitely think that this draws inspiration from one of the most popular rock climbing games in VR today, called The Climb. And I have to say that I'm happy to report that when you're jumping, especially on these pipes there where space is very tight, the controls are very, very well calibrated. So you're not going to feel like you're falling or you're jumping too high or too far or too close. All these various different settings have been calibrated, as I mentioned, to perfection. So this is really cool. Where the developers do need to improve the gameplay, however, is when you're piloting various different vehicles. Here's a clip to show you how tough of a hard time I'm actually having with the controls. One of the aspects of the game that I do like a lot is the fact that they do promote recycling all around the game because you have to go out and find various different materials that are just lying around here and there and then put them inside of this futuristic printer so that it basically will churn out some special chemicals that you then transform so you can basically upgrade your weapons but also create various different fruits of such or foods that you get to eat to replenish your energy bar. All right, so I'm going to show you some high fidelity renders in a slideshow and some mixed reality footage as well and give you my final thoughts at the end of the video. Leave some comments below. This looks familiar. A squid poaching camp. Check out if you can find something useful. A more powerful torpedo gun. Right, now we have to look for squid eggs. Ready for a swim? I'll meet you on the other side. Bearing in mind that this game was developed by a small team of indie developers who had, by the way, kept changing along the way. So they never had really the same people working on everything at the same time. Also, they didn't have the huge millions of dollars or 
tens of thousands of dollars or whatever it might be that Valve had to develop Half-Life Alex. I have to say that I'm very excited that these guys actually, to me, did pull it off. And I'm just really happy that, you know, they actually made an effort to try and push the boundaries of VR to the next level. Is the game finished? I really don't feel that it is. I think that this game is a great, I would say, not demo because of course it's a full game but it really is a great game to have in the portfolio so potentially they could get better investment and then either tweak all the various different things inside of this version of the game or come out with a new version later on and really provide us an amazing or I would say astonishing experience because I really can't imagine how better it can be other than tweaking all the various different maps here and there in avoiding all the various different blurriness or low resolution textures that you can definitely see along the way. Where the team has done an awesome job is also all the atmospherics in terms of the sound design and it is out of this world. I dare you to count all the sound effects that they've used from the gun, the walking, the electricity, the air, the, I mean just so many different things even inside of the water you'll hear all the various different splashes and the bubbles and, and the, oh, it's just really makes you feel like you're inside all the various different environments for sure and the voice talents are also spot on it's very easy to understand the English or the language that they're using when they're actually talking in the various different environments as well I mean I have to admit that they've done a really good job despite the fact that there are some graphic issues here and there but does it detract from the actual gameplay honestly no it doesn't and if I was to rate this game out of 10, I would definitely give it a good 8 out of 10 simply because it does need to be refined here and there. But honestly speaking, in terms of the puzzles, the difficulty, the gameplay, I just had a lot of good fun. And I did play the game multiple times as I spent more than 20 hours in hubris. So guys, I hope that you found this video very helpful. Do smash the like so more people get to see it and to let me know that you want similar videos in the future. And do remember to hit the notification after you sub and also join so you get to become a member and enjoy the exclusive perks that other members are enjoying today. Until next time guys, take it easy, have a wonderful week and weekend. I'll see you in a new video very soon. Bye for now.